Hey everybody, Sarah the Real Simple Mama here with our girls, my kids in the sandbox. It is December 1st, and you know what, it's like, oh yeah, red shoulder hawks flying through the neighborhood. See it? Sneak. It's a hawk. That is a hawk, that's right. So it's uh, actually warm out here and my kids are finally over a cold that has taken like a week to get over. So we are outside. And I wanted to talk to you today about just common sense with your birds. And then uh, I am hiding. It's wrapped up in a towel right now so they didn't attack me when I came out the door. But I wanted to show you guys um, exactly how long it takes my ravenous birds to uh, to go through an entire cob of corn. Now, my girls have actually not gotten any snacks other than just uh, maybe a little bit of, of uh, soldier fly larva or uh, mealworms other than their food for quite a few days because their droppings were getting kind of runny. Um, and just like people or, you know, real simple, get out of there you birds. Uh, Real Simple Mama, you know, is a parenting website originally, so we talk about diapers and poop and all kinds of stuff, but um, my girls were having kind of runny droppings. I don't suspect that they're sick. Um, all of the other things that I did in their, their little birdie checkup show that they're fine. So just some, some droppings. Come here, girls. Chick, 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 chick. Come on. Come here, girls. Chick, 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 chick. I'm like, what, lady? Come here. Oh, yeah. Come here. Well, tell me, Dottie. Hey, I may have to go over there. This may be not a great idea. So I, uh... Come here. Hey, tick, 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 tick. Hey, Daddy Bird. Oh. Yeah, you know what that is. You gonna get it by yourself? Okay, come on. Come on, Dottie. Daddy's like, man, forget the sandbox. I want my food. Come here. Tick, 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 tick. It's the running of the birds. There's Lollipop. Come on, Dottie. <laughs> Come on, chick, 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 chick. Yeah, well, Lollipop's gonna get it all by herself then. Ha ha. Come here, girl. All right, here we go. One of the best pieces of advice that I got as far as chickens, right when we first got chickens, you know, I'm, I'm reading about Bumblefoot and I'm reading about all these different parasites and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm gonna have to constantly just be watching and and you know it's kind of like being a new parent you think like oh my god i need to have like every single thing that people recommend and i'm going to have to watch out against this disease and this condition and this injury and oh my gosh and so i asked somebody um on one of the chicken forums where i frequent what kind of stuff should i get in my my toolbox or in my arsenal if you will almost like a chicken medical kit or a chicken first aid kit and the most important thing that i was told was get a bucket so that you can sit and observe your chickens you hear our hawk friend? So in observing my girls, um, you know, Thanksgiving was last week. So around Thanksgiving, they probably were indulging just a little bit too much in the leftover pumpkins and things like that. So um, I could tell by their, their droppings. And you wanna make sure, I won't zoom in on, on anything, but you just want to watch your, your birds long enough to make sure, like, are they eating? Are they drinking? Are they hanging out? Are they able to walk on both feet? Um, are they just doing normal chicken stuff? I mean, you know, chickens are so fun to watch, and they're so goofy, and they're so individualistic. They like to... They dig around, and they, they're, they're funny head bobbing, and, and they run, and they talk to each other constantly, and... So you just want to make sure that your chickens are acting like chickens. And so when I was sitting out here, probably Sunday or Monday, today is Friday, I noticed that um, particularly my, my big girl, Calypso, who you can see her, she's my black sex link. She's right over there. She's still in the sandbox. Her droppings were really runny. And they were the normal color, you know, and you kind of want to just observe your birds. But it made me think, all right, we need to lay off of the, the treats for a while and just make sure that everything in her system is able to go back to normal. And now she seems fine. Um, you'll notice, let me see if I can find chicken poop that doesn't look you know, too graphic, I guess. Um, there's one in there. I'm not going to zoom in or anything. So if you're on an HD screen, don't worry. Um, but, you know, chickens only have one um, hole, if you will, for anything to go in or out mm -hmm. as far as, you know, their vent on their backside for the hen. So, oh, Dottie Bird. 
for lollipops. She's the bottom of our pecking order, which is a real thing, by the way. But oh, here comes Calypso. Hey, big girl. I Miss mean, Nat, now she's the alpha, so maybe she's going to kick Dottie out of the way. It's your corn girls. But, um, so, you know, all, all birds, their pee and poop is basically combined into one. And there's a fancy name for the, the part of, of their droppings that's considered the urine. But basically on chicken poop, you, you'll notice their poop is two different colors. It's like an olive camo green and it is white. The white part essentially is like the urine. And so Callie Bird, Calypso right here, she's the one who, this sounds like really horrible, but I heard her poop, like it, it was like a ketchup bottle. And it was like, okay, so I went over and you wanna look, you know, if you're pretending that this, this feather here is, is a poop, you wanna look and make sure you see both of the colors, you see the, the camo green and the white, and then um, just the consistency of it, making sure there's nothing that looks weird in it, like blood or, um, you know, anything that's just kind of goofy. But hers was very liquid, so I did want to check it for parasites. And to be honest with you, the more that I've learned, I'm still, of course, a chicken beginner, and I only have my three. <laughs> Lollipop, she's the one who loves the kids, and now I see, I see her butt over there. But your, your birds probably have some kind of, of worm or some kind of, of mite or, or something like that, especially if you live kind of more out in the middle of nowhere. Um, that's not necessarily a cause for alarm. You know, we have all kinds of bacteria and parasites and things like that. Like there's some kind of parasite that's like a microscopic sort of um, arachnid type mite that lives on the bases of people's eyelashes and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So. Um, I wanted to be sure that there wasn't an excess because if your chicken's body is starting to be taken over by worms or any kind of internal parasite, the sort of the, the extras will kind of start showing up in the poop. So like almost like your chicken's body is over capacity. Um, there's no vacancy as far as, as parasites are concerned. So I checked uh, Callie's droppings and she was good. I mean, obviously she's bright eyed. She's still laying every day. She looks good. Um, she's eating, drinking. She's my, my chill boss lady so i figured okay we just need to to cool it with the food oh daddy bird and i'm not gonna intervene or try to tell daddy to be nice or anything like that because <laughs> chickens running is like the most funny it's like hilarious um because there is a pecking order that that term is a real thing and they're gonna do it whether or not you're watching them and babysitting them, so. Ooh, ooh. This is exciting. <laughs> my girls, love my girls. These dumb birds. You wanna know what I was doing last night? Between 9 and 11 p.m. when I went to bed, my husband and my kids fell asleep really early. Like I said, my kids had been sick all week. They were coughing in the night, and so we've just been exhausted. So my husband went to bed at 9. Between 9 and 11 p.m. last night, I was watching chicken videos and looking at chicken decor on Amazon. I have, like, I don't even know how many pairs of, of chicken socks in my cart right now. Dottie bird. So the main takeaway from this video, I guess, and I have a couple of other random things that I can teach you if you'd like to stick around, but the main point of this video is just watch your birds, know your birds. I mean, any living animal that's gonna be in your care or obviously any person, any child or disabled person or, or elderly person, they need you every day. Whether or not you're tired or you don't feel like it or the weather sucks or it's cold or you don't wanna come outside or whatever, your birds need you every single day. And sometimes, um, you know, I follow the, the chicken chick. She's amazing. Um, and I know she recently had a, had a predator attack that took out, I don't, I don't know how many birds, at least five or six of her flock. And it's like, you know, that's, that's something that you understand, but you need to do what you can that is in your power um, just to observe your birds, to treat them, to help them. Because they're in your care. They need you. So... <laughs> Tell her, Callie. 
Hello. So every day, if you can, try to come out, you know, check and make sure that, um, you know, if you haven't seen my chicken chores video, that's a good one. It's a compilation of pretty much all of the labor and effort that it takes to, to care for these spoiled brats on a regular basis. But just make sure they're doing chicken stuff. Just like you can tell if your spouse or your significant other or a loved one or your best friend, if something's off, you could tell with your birds too. And what's interesting is with, um, I know at least with chickens, I'm not sure if other birds or other, you know, herd species or flock species do this, but chickens, if they're sick or if they're injured, a lot of times they'll, they'll fake it um, around the rest of the flock because they don't want to seem weak. Um, you know, because you have to think, especially from, you know, a non-predator, <clears throat> a non-predator species, you know, the weakest one's going to be the one that gets picked off by a predator. And so, um, you know, like I want to make sure that my girls are, you know, they're not, um, favoring one leg or one foot, for example, or they're not, um, keeping an eye closed because even if they are, if they're hurting, um, you know, if they're injured, if they're, if they're sick, if they can, they will mask that they will. Um, you know, they'll put up a front to pretend that they're okay because they don't want to get um, their pecking order. Not, they don't want to get knocked down that totem pole, if you will. Um, and they don't want to be seen as, um, you know, a weak bird because then they'll be, they can be a victim of pecking and, you know, clawing and scratching and, and they, you know, they couldn't even be killed by the rest of their flock. So, um, you know, just be observant enough with your birds that, that you're watching. They have clear eyes, their droppings look normal. <clears throat> I think I talked about poop enough for one day, but that they're eating, that they're drinking. Um, at least once or twice a week, I, I just pick up my girls and I cradle them under one arm and I just look at their feet um, just to make sure that their, their feet are good. <laughs> when I was first looking at, at getting chickens, I, uh, I read a lot about Bumblefoot. I don't know why it was one of those cool, fascinating, gross, like why can I not look away type things. And so I became kind of obsessed with like making sure my chickens didn't have bumblefoot. <laughs> so, but checking, I don't know, just making sure that they're clean. I may have to give Dottie a bath soon. Okay. She's starting to get just a little bit of, um, of poop back there. She's just got a big fluff butt. But just watch your birds. You'll notice also it's the beginning of December and my girls were, um, they were hatched in April they haven't molted and they're egg laying they're still all laying every day and that's because this is their first year they're a spring chicken if you will see there's another like chicken related phrase that we use in society and um, so they're not gonna molt this year and they're not going to slow down their egg laying but after this this winter or this autumn then they, they will Daddy bird and I'm the person in all of the forums, so I'm like, oh my god, why do my chickens still have all their feathers? You know, is there something wrong with them? But they're good. We're going to have to trim their wings again soon, too. You can look up that guide. It's really easy to do. Um, there's just one section of, of feathers on one wing that we, that we clip. We're going to have to clip them again soon just to make sure my birds don't decide to go adventuring. Because I'm sure the neighbors wouldn't be super thrilled with that. My son's doing a monologue over in the sandbox and the chickens are just enthralled. And then there's my corgi, doing nothing as usual. The Dottie's still going to town, so I'll have to keep an eye on her droppings tonight and tomorrow and make sure that, that, she's, that she's good. And there she goes. But I hope this has been helpful to you. I know it's been a little bit rambling. I always have so many things that I, that I want to teach my viewers, that I want to talk about, that I want to help you with. Um, so, and if you ever have any questions or suggestions or, hey, what is that? Or why do you do this? Or, or whatever, please just ask in the comments. I get back to comments. Um, I respond easily within 24 hours and I really just want to help everybody. Our chickens are wonderful. We love them. They're super affordable. They're obviously just extremely dangerous around children, obviously. But just some common sense advice on just taking care of your birds. Oh, that little butt waggle. But this is Real Simple Mama and our little flock. And we'll see you again soon.